a future hold. Wherever you look, from whichever walk of life, we know there is great potential within, just waiting to be unlocked. For every milestone in your life, no matter how big or small, Baiduri is with you, enriching your life at every stage. For every business ambition, no dream is too big and no challenge is too great. Baiduri is with your business. Empowering success every step of the way with our global outlook and deep local insights. As your financial partner, we believe in truly understanding your needs. We engage through meaningful experiences with you in mind as we build lifelong relationships. This is what co-creation means to us. Enriching, empowering, and engaging the communities we serve for over two decades. Together, our journey continues as we evolve, turning dreams into reality, uncovering new possibilities in a changing world. This is who we are. By Dury Bank, co-creating your future. Hello and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Glow Up Friday, a women's empowerment event brought to you by Baiduri Bank. My name is Amy Cheong, and I'm your host for today. As you know, March is Women's Month, and the 8th of March was International Women's Day, a day celebrating the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of women across the globe. The day also marks a call for action, for equality for all women. Together, we can forge women's equality, and collectively, we can break the bias. With a wonderful lineup of talks touching on finance, fitness, and supporting new moms, as well as performances and prizes to be won, we have a great one-hour event that we hope will inspire, motivate, and empower you to be your best self. We also have a lucky draw happening where you stand a chance to win a $100 shopping voucher. Now, in order for you to be eligible, all you have to do is stay tuned from the very beginning up to the end of our program. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to ask our performers as well as our presenters your questions in the chat box below. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us, and we hope you have a great time here for our Glow Up Friday. Without further ado, it's time for us to begin our program. Now, ladies and gentlemen, every single year, we make that New Year, New Me promise. And sometimes, it's not that easy to stick to it. We don't know where to start, we don't know how to begin. So to help us, especially with fitness now, we're gonna be talking to our fitness coach, co-owner of 673 Girodong. She is also a national record holder for the under 55 kilograms women category in weightlifting. She has a total of four years experience in personal training and group training sessions of whom she is majority teaching ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome and put your hands together for Liana Siddig. Thank you very much, Amy. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Liana Sidek, and I think I'd like to start out this talk and my entire talk by first introducing myself. Um, it serves a good way to kind of get to know each other in the process. Um, I found fitness in 2014, back when I was 19. Now, before that, I was a teenager who was, I think, at the very end of the line. I was far away from being athletic. I was not active by any means. So I found fitness in 2014 only when I was 19. I was... I think quite blessed to find a gym that helped me realize the importance of fitness um, and not only that, helped me find my self-confidence. Now fast forward to 2018, around there, I started dabbling a little bit more into coaching people because I realized that I wanted to find some way to help people find how I find my strength all those years ago. So I decided to invest a little bit more in myself, go, went ahead and got my CrossFit Level 1 trainer certificate. From there on, 
Fast forward to graduating my bachelor's degree, I decided to take the leap and went ahead and made personal training and coaching my full-time career. So here I am. Fast forward to 2020, I decided to buy the gym that I found fitness at, uh, 670 Juridong with two other partners, one of which is now my husband. Um, and only recently, I set Brunei's national record uh, in the under 55 women's category in weightlifting. So that's a brief introduction of myself. And today I'd like to talk more about a topic that I feel isn't talked about a lot or talked about enough in our community, and that is women and strength training. Two words that I think we don't talk about enough and two words that I think the community doesn't associate enough. So in order to talk about strength training, I feel like it's also important for me to point out that the first thing that uh, whenever I meet someone new, and if they find out I'm a fitness trainer, or they find out I lift some kind of weights, the first thing or the first comment that I usually hear is, you lift weights? Looking like that? And I know we're gonna have some giggles and laughs because it's true. It's true, just to put into perspective, I'm standing at five feet tall and weighing in about 53 kilos. Now, it's not the exact ideal image you would have in your head when you were to think about strength. These two words, women and strength, are not the exact two words you would associate together. And it's something to ponder upon. Why don't we associate women with strength, particularly physical strength? It's something all of us can think about because I am too also guilty of not putting those two words together. Something to think about as we go through this entire talk. And these are only things that we, uh, I hear on a daily basis as a fitness trainer. If I were to strength train, do I need to lift very heavy weights? Do I absolutely have to work with a barbell or must I own a gym membership and go to the gym every single day? These are questions that I hope to answer, hopefully in the next uh, few slides. So in order to talk about strength training as general, it's important to first define it. What is strength training? We throw around that word pretty often, and it's something that I work with daily, as this is my full-time job. So sometimes you can always think about strength training and resistance training as something that's interchangeable. In this case, and in my talk in particular, I will be using these two terms interchangeably. Now, strength training is as the name suggests, you and your muscles working against some kind of resistance. Now, how does that work? It's the repeated process of putting stress on your muscles and then rebuilding those muscles over and over again, resulting in getting stronger muscles, muscle gains. And with stronger muscles, you increase your ability to perform tasks efficiently, as easy as walking up the stairs efficiently without your knees hurting, sitting down and up, hiking up, hiking, going hiking for your friends without your back hurting, as easy as that. So the more strength you gain in your muscles, the more you're able to carry out simple daily tasks efficiently without pain, and without discomfort. Now, these are things that I also get, I get questions of this a lot. What equipments do I need to say that I am strength training? Do I need barbells? Do I need to go to the gym? It's as easy as working with resistance and the one most readily available resistance you have right now is your own body weight. Use your own body weight, body weight exercises, body weight squats, body weight lunges, things like that. You can use exercise bands, much cheaper than barbells and kettlebells. And then of course, something that you can find in almost every gym in every country, exercise machines. You wanna go the extra mile, get barbells and plates, or go to your local gym, kettlebells, dumbbells. Any kind of resistance, any kind of tempo work consider, can be considered as strength training or resistance training. Okay, so I think that we cannot talk about strength or working with weights without addressing the fears and or the myths that surround strength training and women. Now, if you look at the first question, 
there. I think this is something that whether you are in the fitness industry or not, you will hear this a lot. And I've sat with consultations with clients or potential clients that ask me this all the time. Even in small talk, they ask me, will I get bulky? Now, the first thing that we need to address here is that I think in this day and age, social media has done a really good job at portraying what we think or what they think we want to see strength to be portrayed as. And I think that we need to also address the fact that you will never get bulky accidentally. No one gains big muscles accidentally. It takes, it takes years of dedication, years of specific training, years of discipline in your food and your diet to intentionally get as bulky as the pictures you see on social media or just the media in general. So the simple answer to that is no. You cannot get accidentally bulky just overnight by carrying some kind of weight. Um, the next one is, will I become more prone to injury? Something very general that we, see, we hear all the time. And the easiest way to think about this is, if you do resistance training to get stronger and you want to get stronger to become safe in the things that you do to be safer, then how can getting stronger make you more prone to injury? So uh, there's this quote that I, I've heard, I think, a few years ago, and I think is very relevant here. And there's nothing, and it goes like, there's nothing more dangerous than weakness. There's nothing more dangerous than being weak. So strength training or resistance training done right is very safe. The next one is also related to this, is it's safe for women to work with weights. Now, if you find a credible professional, if you find someone who knows how to guide you through lifting weights, lifting weights for women is safe if it's catered to your needs and is catered to your body type or your concerns. And the last one is, I wouldn't know where to start. Well, hopefully by the end of this talk, you will know where to start. All right, so the next one would be the benefits of strength training. Why would you strength train? Aside from it being fun. Some people find it fun, some people might not. So they might want to know why we should strength train. These are just among the many benefits that strength training can bring you. As easy as if you get stronger, you will be safer, and you will reduce the uh, rate of you getting injured. As easy as if your muscles are strong, it will be able to handle a bit more impact. And as we all know, as we grow older, our bone mass gets lower and lower. We do get weaker and weaker. So it is supposed to increase the integrity of your bone mass. It's supposed to prevent um, osteoporosis or osteoarthritis, something that we want to prevent as old age comes. Um, and any uh, s slowing in age related declines to do with your bone mass density. Now, I'd like to address the benefits that strength training can bring specific to women. And I think I do, um, I do address that a lot of us have different goals, fitness goals in specific, that could be um, weight loss, that could be fat loss, or just changing your body image. I do address that, but we want to put that aside for for just these few slides after this. I always tell people that no matter what your goal is, whether that's to lose weight or to lose fat or to gain a bit more weight, I always tell especially my clients that you should not use health and fitness as a means to make yourself a bit more acceptable to society. Because in this day and age, as I said, social media or the media in general has done a very good job at telling people that there is an ideal body weight, ideal body type, an ideal way to look for you to be accepted into society. So I hope that that's something that we can always address and continue reminding ourselves that health and fitness is more than being just accepted by the way you look because there is no ideal way to look, no ideal 
body weight equals this if you are this height. So standing at 53 kilos, some people would say I am overweight or I am obese. I beg to differ. Here are just a few benefits that strength training can bring to women. In my line of work, and this is a big part of why I love what I do, in a, on a daily basis, I see people break barriers. I see people achieve things that they never thought they could achieve, as easy as getting their first pull-up, getting their first push-up, sitting down and standing up, doing a squat without discomfort, doing a squat without knee pain. These things are very empowering, very rewarding to witness. If it's rewarding for me, and if it's, it's empowering for me to witness that, imagine having yourself experience that. Being able to do something you never thought in a million years you could do. So I witness this all the time, so I would say strength training is very empowering because it gives women the sense of achievement and the sense of power, something that we doubt we have, sometimes on a daily basis. The next one is strength training increases your quality of life. Many of times I sit down with potential clients and I ask them, okay, what is your goal? And most of the time, mothers would come to me, mothers of toddlers, mothers of young children, would come to me and say, all I want is to be able to run around, chase my kids, play with my kids without having knee pain, without ha being going out of breath, without having back pain. I just want to enjoy life with my kids. And I think these are very legitimate goals. It just increases your quality of life in a sense that you can w not worry about having all these pains and play with your kids, hike up hills with your friends, walk up and down the stairs doing chores without having to worry about, uh, no one's gonna help me, my knee hurts, I can't walk right. So if you do strength training, hopefully this will be addressed. The next one, strength training builds the person that you are. Many times we hear people say, I need to work out and burn this much calories to be able to earn this cookie. But if strength training is good for you, why does it have to feel like a punishment? Or exercise doesn't have to be a punishment. Okay, action plan here is how to get started. This is a list that is pretty straightforward, I think. Uh, as I said just now, find someone credible who you can trust, a trained professional, uh, a fitness coach who you can trust to guide you, especially if you're a woman with certain concerns. Find a reliable support system, your friends, your family. Grab a training buddy, helps you keep you accountable. Find a sustainable and flexible routine. You don't have to throw something very important out of your plate just to get a fitness routine. Commit one hour out of the entire week. Stick to that for a few months. One small action is always better than nothing. So as the saying goes, sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit. So dedicate one hour of your entire week, see how you go, start small, and start building from there. I hope this has helped everyone. I know it's something that's a little bit more compressed, but do know that you can reach out whenever you have any questions. I'm always available on my socials um, and my email. So I hope that helps. Back to you, Amy. All right, thank you so much, Liana Siddiq. Um, we unfortunately don't have enough time for questions, so if you have any questions, either put it in the chat box, Liana will take a look at it later, or like she said, hit her on her socials, it's Liana Siddiq, L-I-Y-A-N-A-S-I-D-E-K, okay? Just in case you'd like to ask her any questions. Guess what, guys? It is quiz time. So it's super easy to participate. This is your opportunity to get your hands on a $50 shopping voucher courtesy of Baiduri Bank. We are looking for four lucky winners. Now, all you have to do is scan the QR code that is on your screen or click on the link in the chat box below. So again, two ways, scan the QR code or click the link on the chat box and answer this question, how do you plan to empower yourself and other women this year? Okay, so have a think about it and let us know. It could be a long 
essay or it could be a paragraph or just a sentence, let us know. And uh, again, scan the QR code or click on the link in the chat box. Again, we're looking for four lucky winners to walk away with a $50 shopping voucher each. The winners will be announced at the end of the event. Now let's continue with the rest of our program. Having children is a blessing. But navigating having a family and your career might be a challenge, which brings us to our next topic of discussion, career amidst chaos, how to support new moms in the workplace. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our next guest. She is a trained facilitator as well as a community and youth worker, Rashida Sama. Hi. Hi everyone, assalamu alaikum and a good afternoon. It's really great to be here. Um, my name is Rashida Sama and I'm the person behind Oh Baby Bean. My topic for today is career amid chaos, supporting moms at work with a touch of mental health um, stuff. So it'll be quite um, heavy on the mental health as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce myself later on. We're gonna dive straight into quiz time. So if you have your paper and pens, you can just scroll off. If you don't, you can have your phone, you can just um, um, key in. There is also a quiz on Zoom, which you can answer, it's poll. So um, this quiz is uh, based on a mental health. So on my side, my professional disclaimer is, this does not constitute as a diagnosis. All the contents here are mainly for educational purposes. And if you feel that you're suffering from any mental health issues or disorder, do seek professional help, okay? So going straight to question one, people. A coworker returned to work after her maternity leave last week. You notice that her work has been sloppy and late. What are your thoughts on this, on your, on this behavior? Is this behavior normal? Is this a flag up? Also, is C, is this a cause for concern? This behavior in relation to her mental health. Okay? Second question. Your female coworker has been acting different lately. She's usually easygoing and now worries a lot. She's constantly calling at home and checking up on her baby. She has also been rejecting your lunch offer. So in a nutshell, you have noticed a significant change in behavior in someone close that you know. So what are your thoughts on her behavior? Is this behavior A, normal? Is it B, a flag up? Or is it C, a cause for concern? Okay, on to the next question. You notice that your female subordinate has been very sensitive since the pandemic. She would get angry over the little things. Her outburst makes you feel uncomfortable. So the summary of this is you've been walking around eggshells about someone who you don't feel safe around. What are your thoughts on this behavior? Is this behavior normal? Is this a flag up or C, cause for concern, meaning that you think that she should seek professional help. Okay, the next one, the last one. A close female friend opens up to you. She said that she's been having thoughts of harming her baby. You also notice her posts on her Instagram that are sad and dark. So what are, your, what are your thoughts on this behavior in relation to her mental health? Do you think what's going on in her mental is normal? Is this a flag up or is it a cause for concern and that she should probably seek professional help? All right, we're done with the quiz. So who am I? Who is this woman giving quiz to random people? Um, my name is Rashida. I am a mother of a toddler, Ramina. Um, I am surrounded by inspiring women um, around me. Um, I'm at the stage of life where um, quality over quantity when it comes to friendship. So I've been, I've been hanging out with the same group of people over the past 20 years. And most of them are new mothers. So that's something that we could, um, we could relate to each other. Um, other than that, I like trying new sports with my husband. Recently, we've been trying boxing. I think that's a good way. I, 
because we're both new parents. So trying out new things after that, it's good for our you know, relationship to build that up. Um, I like traveling. I hope we can do that soon. And currently, my hobby is to, to decorate our house because we're currently building. So that yellow kitchen is mine. And you know, no one really gets a yellow kitchen in here. But yeah, I'm kind of proud of my yellow kitchen. <laughs> OK. So oh, baby Bean started when I was six months pregnant. That was almost three years ago. Um, I found um, I found solace and I found comfort in writing and journaling. I feel like that was my self-coping mechanism. I was pregnant that time and I feel like with pregnancy everything is just confusing. I mean generally confusing because there's me trying to put over my career and kind of thinking like what will happen after this? Um, what do I do? So that kind of given anxiety which I feel was not normal that time. Then suddenly mothers came up to me seeking more help, saying that, oh, this is something that I can emphasize with. Just so you know, I'm glad that you, you brought that up because I don't feel like I'm alone in this. So over time, my platform built up, and I have a very underutilized degree in community and youth work. So that is when I utilized my degree and also my background into doing support groups, group counseling sessions, and now I am moving on to um, parenting workshops and collaboration mental health workshops, which I feel is very important, especially in times of pandemic. So why have I been focused so much on new motherhood? Is it because I'm going through it? Or because I feel that this is a very niche area. And with new motherhood, there's a lot of transition going on. There's a lot of changes. And there's a uh, apart from the fact that it changes, it's biological changes, which are sometimes beyond our control. All the hormones, don't get me started on that. <laughs> um, so with the hormones going on, and there's also things like identity crisis, because the new millennial moms, we kind of, you know, we, um, for example, I've supported moms who is doing her PhD while working, while taking care of a baby at the same time. So those are the kind of new millennial moms that come out. Like it's 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 a new it's a new group that we're looking at. So. There's a lot of transition that we think that we can handle, but in reality, these transitions can get overwhelming. So here's the word, overwhelming. So what happens when you get overwhelmed? When you get overwhelmed, you can't manage your stress. And when you can't manage your stress, it can manifest into something such as postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, and, I, and we all don't want to go down that route because it has a significant impact on our child and on our family. So, motherhood in the new norm. A few days ago, I was giving a talk about, um, in collaboration with Japan, on motherhood in the new norm. And everyone kind of laughed, like, what does motherhood mean nowadays? And we all said, motherhood means being a teacher, being a nurse, being a chef, being a driver, and also being a mom. <laughs> and so this is the thing with motherhood and new, norm, new norm. As motherhood is already overwhelming, combined with the new normal, a lot of things are unpredictable. And this unpredictability could, could give in a lot of chaos, which is why I feel that going back to our topic of supporting new moms, some moms, it might affect their quality at work, and that is the reality of motherhood in the new norm. So going back to my question, how can we support women in the workplace? One is to educate yourself, like what we're doing right now. I'm sure um, there's quizzes right now on mental health um, and things like normalizing, talking about mental health, normalizing, saying that I'm not okay today, I'm just not feeling myself. Um, perhaps, you know, um, can, can I just have a pause? So those are the kind of things um, to, to, be, to be human, to normalize talking about our feelings and emotions. And secondly, how can the workplace support women is to offer incentives such as um, daycare or little things that could help support women to mo get motivated to go to work, such as breastfeeding, um, breast pumping room, they call it? Uh, pumping rooms, yeah. And also uh, another thing that I realized lately is the importance of mentors and support groups. When you're in a mentoring and support group um, environment, you are being offered non-judgmental advice where you know there's no hierarchy. So you could just address someone as like, oh yeah, I'm having a problem, I don't feel, in a way, the Malay word is galat. I think a lot of people say that, galat to your boss, that you're having trouble. 
Okay, so another one that I realize a lot of mom come to me as well is in the need for flexible working hours, especially when you're working from home. Because when I work from home, I only can do my work like whenever everyone is asleep. Because when you work from home, there's pretty much no boundaries. There's my kid eating cereal, and I don't want to go to that route, but <laughs> basically working from home is another <laughs> level of no boundary, which is why there needs to be a flexible working hours. Okay. and. And the last one, I feel that um, how can we support moms in the workplace? I know it took a while for me to realize what should I put in the last one. But then again, going back to my own story, um, one of the ways is to recognize our unsung heroes, which is the fathers. Because ultimately, the fathers are the ones that contribute to the mother's mental health, so which means a supportive father would mean a happier mother indirectly. All right, that's it. Thank you. So my name is Rashida Sama, and today I would like to break the bias. And if you'd like to reach me or um, out for a support group, you can reach me at my Instagram account, obbbean. Thank you very much, <laughs> Rashida. And as she mentioned, if you'd like to get in touch with her, head on over to O oh Baby Beans. Thank you very much, okay. Rashida. And I love what you said. Very true. Mothers at home, they're the chef, they're the drivers, the cooks, the teachers, the nurses. And uh, of course, we have to thank our supportive dads as well. Now, I hope you're all having a great time listening to all our speakers and celebrating women. If you've just joined us, Thank you so much for joining us for our Glow Up Friday, a women's empowerment event brought to you by Baiduri Bank. Now, at Baiduri Bank, we would like to empower you to take control of your financial future. And to help you with that, you can download the Women's Empowerment Booklet via the Linktree link in the Instagram page of Baiduri Bank. You can do that right now or click on the link in the chat box below. This booklet can contains templates for budgeting, saving, and spending tips, as well as ideas for side hustles to help women on their journey to be financially confident. Now, up next, we have the first of three performances for you today. Performing a song entitled Jika, released earlier this month, written by local talent Effa Rosli. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Asnil Yunus. Hello, everybody. Uh, I hope you have a great day so far. So um, right now, let's take it slow. Enjoy the music. Jika, jika tidak 
Jika kita tak pernah bertemu Jika kita di takdir tak bersatu Aku takkan merasa gelora asmara Jika semua cuma jika Jika tidak ada That was absolutely beautiful, Jika with Asnil Yunus. Now that song was, of course, written by F.R. Rosley and it was released much earlier this month. Now, Asnil, I've got a question for you. Can you just tell us a little bit about the song? What is the song about? Oh, um, it's the song about it's the in a relationship. Sometimes you have to, you have this thing that you, you you're thinking about. What if this happens to me? Or will, will it be different to or where I be right now? Something like that. It's something to think about. Uh, sometimes you have to. Sometimes your mind needs uh, a place to escape uh, from reality. So the fantasy is good for you. Some sometimes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit on what the song is about, Jika. If what if? Which is a good question sometimes we ask ourselves. What if I had done something differently? What if the reality was different? What if I had my finance in order? Which is the next topic we are about to delve into. Financial planning, which is a skill that at some point we are all going to need to know. The question is, is financial planning strategies equal for both genders? Is it the same for men as it is for women? So to dive into the topics of money, finance, financial planning, let's welcome our next guest, Siti Amina Haji Abdul Rahman, Manager, Wealth Management by Duri Bank. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Siti Amina. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everybody. All right. So I'm happy to be here again, um, just to share, uh, proudly to be uh, part of this session. By Duri Bank has been very actively and ongoing promoting financial literacy throughout our event, road shows, and lineups of su financial supplements in order for us to assist our customer and you, right, to reach your financial goals. Okay, so when we talk about financial planning, ah, okay, this is it, all right? Financial planning is, is not necessary to be only for women or men. Men, women, single, okay, or married, everybody needs to have a proper planning in order for you to reach your future ahead, okay? So, um, based on um, my experience, I always receive a feedback, all right? Feedbacks in terms of common mistakes that we have in our mind, such as procrastination, okay, kelalaian, Kelalayanan they will say like, oh, when you uh, talk about financial planning, never mind, I'll start by next six months. I start next bonuses, or so on and so on. All right? Until tomorrow never come. All right? So, and ketani pun selalu mendengar, all right? Um, oh, financial planning, it's only for those who have Enough money, my dear friends, dear darling, okay? Never, we never get enough with our income if we don't know how to manage our needs and our wants, okay? So even if you say that I, I, my income is like 1,005, oh, not enough. I wish my income money like 2,005. Or maybe when you reach 2,005, oh, not enough. I, I wish my income money 5,000. All right, and so on and so on. And also, we always blame on, I have too many commitments. You see, 
commitments, commitment, commitment satu pun, we are the one who created those. And the most important thing, like recent situation, we only think about our short-term needs. And we tend to forget about our long-term uh, financial goals, such as retirement. When we talk about retirement, we will tend to say like, oh, never mind, it's another 20 years to go, I'm still young, okay? But if once you reach 20 years next or 10 years later on, then we will start like, macam lagu tadi kan, what if I started earlier? All right, then. This is something that very interesting because every time I, um, I have a discussion with my guy's friend, they always said like, ah, women and spending their best friend. I said, no, now spending pattern is a gender equality. Men and women, they have their own spending pattern. I'm telling you, I even um, accompany one of my uh, nephew, uh, went to a barber shop. Even a barber shop have a facial then uh, mass, uh, first feeling and all that right now. So, when it is regardless of man or woman, but it's the matter back down to your needs and wants, all right? Sometimes Tani confused with needs and wants and need. Whatever you, your wants are to, you press on you, it is all your needs, all right? So, the most common that I will pick up here, most common habit in spending for women are self-care. Okay, every month, at the joy young, like, we go to salon, okay, wash some hairs and all that. That's why I keep my hair short. But no lah, even my hair short, I still go to salon and wash my hair again. Then we go to spa and all that, right? Facial and all those. Then, health supplements, because everybody now, they are very concerned in terms of health, all right? So we tend to spend on health supplements. And ladies, okay, yes, men pun sama jua, but sometimes, but mostly lah, ha, ladies and ni, we were born to be more soft-hearted, sentimental. We love to bagi hadiah, a gifts to our loved one, right? Friends, family, and so on. Then we taking care of our elderly most of the time, and then children. And the best part is groceries, because you know why I like this topic? When my colleagues say, can you talk about um, financial planning, the difference between men and women? I said, okay. Why? Because I always have a good discussion with my guy's friend as well. Then said like, oh, like groceries, when their wife asked them to buy, buy list of groceries, 10 lists, it will only stick for 10 lists. All right? But kalau mostly, Mostly, lah, not all women, chmato, okay? uh, maybe I'm speaking about myself as well. Once you start to pigang the trolley, then you move more than 10 type of groceries because we like to cook and like we have more creativity ideas in, ter in terms of ingredients. And when you see there, I have like a best on recent study by statista.com. It is very interesting when it says that cosmetic industry, 42%, the cos cosmetic industry contributed by skincare, and then 22% on hair care and 16% on, on makeup. But watch out. Other than spending on all those like groceries, health supplements and all that, there's one ad hoc spending, which is retail therapy, all right? For retail therapy, we, we usually re rename it, rename it as self-reward. Okay, there's, there's no problem for you to have a retail therapy. There's no problem for you to, to buy whatever you want, but be careful to avoid any impulsive spending, okay? All right, let me share with you some, some national statistics from Brunei Darussalam Vital Statistic in 2020. Uh, this is from uh, Department of Economic Planning and Statistics by Ministry of Finance and Economy. 
when you see there, okay, it says life expectancy for men, okay, average up to 78, and then women up to 80. Then they always say, like, of course, lainnya because men selalu stressnya, okay, stress mikirkan women banyak belanja. No, that's not the case, right? Let's go for the next slide. Okay, this is some national statistic as well in terms of the life birth rate. Okay, let's make it as a summary. In terms of financial goals, we are talking about retirement. Why? Because we need to prepare to live longer. Nowadays, living longer is quite expensive. <laughs> now, I'm not say, saying that not to um, on the otherwise, but let us do some retirement planning, maintaining your re retirement lifestyle because we used to have a stream income. After you're 60, then you have no more income because we will receive one lump sum of retirement fund. So how do we want to manage from 60 to 80? It's 20 years to go. How enough is our current retirement? Uh, did anyone check recently um, your retirement fund? I think it's time now for us to check, then to, to, to look into how much do you think that you're gonna earn in the next 20 years. Children education, because nowadays children education is not that cheap as like 20 or 30 years ag ago, all right? Then, that's why we need some investment um, to look into it in order to optimize our return. Insurance coverage, right? Insurance coverage, we always overlook that, ah, it's only insurance only for, um, for something protection and all that. But it is one of the most important thing in terms of financial planning. Let me tell you the answer on the next slide. Recently, my dear friend, we encounter a pandemic where nobody predict and we didn't expect that we outrun our budget during the pandemic. Why I say that? Because we tend to spend and stock up into our home remedies. Okay, you even know um, recently you can't find eucalyptus easily, you can't even find lemon, all right? Like you don't even know how to, to eat chengkeh and now you can eat chengkeh. So it's all about the, the pandemic. But we are thinking about now. That is pandemic now. How about any other health, uh, health issue, such as um, based on the vital report in 2020 as well. Non-communicable disease, all right, remain as the major death of Brunei Darussalam, which were top three, cancer, and then heart diseases, and also um, uh, diabetes. Okay. So, um, after all, here's some tips for us to start with, right? Review your budget. When is the last time you re review your budget, all right? Then, if you, after you review your budget, then you can do some side hustles. I'm so proud, okay, I'm so happy to see a few friends. They started to, deal, to, cre to earn their side income from their creativity. They do backing, home base, okay, they do some um, DIY on mass accessories and all that. They follow the trend. And you start your saving now. No need to start like 500, kalau I said like, okay, you can start 500, then they, you all will say like, apa ni, Siti Aminah, 500, okay? No, you can start small. You maybe can start like 50, 100, and it's the way how you want to shape your discipline. All right, we are born to be a very curi curi high curiosity, so why not you explore some investment option, okay? But when you talk about investment option, they will say, oh, it's risky and all that. My dear friend, let's do some, um, uh, let's do some differentiate, okay? 
which one is more riskier? You spend your money without zero, without any value, or you set aside another money with a cash, little cash value, all right? You can speak to our, my colleague, all right? Uh, we have financial lineup of financial planners. You can speak to our Baiduri Capital team. They will assist you in doing your risk profiling. Then you consider on insurance coverage to, to maintain some of the, uh, set aside your budget for long-term care. Okay, you better start now, all right, why? Because we always tell, we always say that better, bet, uh, it's better late than never, but don't be too late, yeah, all right? An independent woman is not only empowered by their characteristic or achievement, but the best is you ab your ability in terms of achieving your financial happiness. So let me, as I mentioned, by Duri Bank, we have this in our website. You can book your consultation online. With that one, you don't know where to start, don't worry. You just answer all these questionnaires to get where you started, all right? You just click, 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 then you can just leave your contact details. Once you leave your contact details under the online booking, then you can set your preferred consultation on your preferred time and preferred date. And the most easiest, after that, you can just like book a consultation. All right. I hope to see you in the next event. Okay, so we can speak more on other tips and I hope whatever we share just now, all right, will bring benefits to me, to you and to everybody. So, thank you everyone and please stay safe. Thank you very much, Siti Amina, Manager, Wealth Management Center by Duri Bank. And I love what she said, better late than never, but don't be too late. Now, a couple of reminders. We do have our ongoing quiz. We are looking for four lucky winners to walk away with a $50 shopping voucher each. All you need to do is click on the link. It's probably somewhere there in the chat box to the quiz and answer the question, how do you plan to empower yourself and other women this year? So again, four lucky winners, $50 shopping voucher each. Let's get typing. We also have our lucky draw happening at the end of our program. And that lucky person is going to be walking away with a $100 shopping voucher. So so stay tuned until the very end of our program. We also have the Women's Empowerment Booklet for you to download. All you need to do is go on over to the Linktree link on the Baiduri Instagram page. Now, this booklet contains templates for budgeting, saving, and spending tips, as well as some advice on side hustles. Now, our next performer, our second performance of the day, has been writing since the age of nine. Last year, she published a collection of poems for an online zine called Moxie, which chronicled female strength from heartbreak to empowerment. Now, the piece that she's performing today was especially written for our event. And just so you know, today, this performance is her very first performance ever. So performing her piece, Hey Beautiful, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our writer and poet, Lin Wong. It is so cool when someone comes out of the blue and tell you things the mirror will not say to you. You can look at your reflection, mentally make alterations, avoiding reality through imagination. Yet forget it all the moment he says, hey, beautiful, and you would melt like a lump of sugar oozing through your heart. A new sweet addiction, the unhealthy kind of art. And you might think about the times you have been here several times before. When you're 16 and you looked at food and only see numbers, when you're 20 and you cared for childish men like a mother, when you're 33 and you do your duties as a daughter, and the way you carry your heart 
as a lover, paint your face as a flower, carve yourself in any shape and color, anything you would do to retain this power of receiving affection this sweet, handed to you in open arms. And then you wonder, have I spent my entire life trying to be an adjective? Have I ever been a stone making ripples through the stream, hustling like hurricanes, brewing my own dreams, embodying lyrics that I would sing loudly? Have I ever been me for me? Fast forward, you are who you are now. And you place the two alphabets of me in front of men, and how funny it may seem if they think we ever did that to bring them down, but no, honey, they had to know. It's only just a pronoun that you would use selfishly from now on. Me, M-E, two letters, one word, zero tolerance, for we have heard pretty things, but what we want for ourselves is the action for a bigger table. Compliance, unity, understanding, something stable. And we'll come with the wood, hammer, nails, and drills, carving conversations of things we can fulfill, making spaces fit enough for everyone to sit. What I meant is, you're not a decoration. You're the party itself, a walking celebration, a best-selling in every shelf. And I understand if your heart still skips a beat when he looks at you from across the street. And it can just be. Don't shy away. Let him stare. For he probably had never seen a woman this rare. So the next time he says, hey, beautiful, look into his irises and say, thank you. I know I exist. Thank you. <laughs> Lin Wong, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, there with Hey Beautiful. Now, I've got one question for you. What inspired you to write Hey Beautiful? Oh, that's a good uh, question. Thank you, Amy. Uh, what inspired me to write Hey Beautiful was that I've been surrounded by so many amazing and inspiring women that has shaped me into who I am. And these days, females have so much responsibilities that they tend to put it in front of them and they tend to neglect their own self. So I think that this poem is dedicated to the women who have been working hard and has always put others before themselves. And it's a reminder that, you know what? It's okay to prioritize yourself and let people acknowledge your beauty as well as you. So Thank you very much for your answer, Lynn. And don't be afraid to put M-E in front of everything. You are important. Now, it's time for our final performance of the day. Uh, this is another musical performance, this time from sibling duo Fatin and Kais Muzini. Now, Fatin started singing in 2009, mainly doing covers on YouTube. Fast forward 10 years, and she's delved into making her own music, her own original tracks, including Can We Make It and Something, all of which are available on music platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, and even Deezer. Now, Kais, who is her brother, started learning piano at the age of six. He ended up joining a Gulintangan group, and he's now currently a permanent member of the sequence band, and he also produces songs, one of which was his sister's track, Can You Make It? So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Fatin and Kais Musini performing Titanium. You shut it out I can't hear a word you say I'm talking loud and I say much I'm criticized But all your bullets ricochet You shoot me down Good. 
Thank you very much, Fatih and Kaiz Muzini. Thank you so much. And we have come to the end of our program, which means it is now time for us to announce the winners of our quiz. As we mentioned, we are looking for four lucky winners walking away with a $50 shopping voucher each. So here are our four winners. I'm going to need to zoom in on my phone just a little bit. Give me a second. First winner is Masjia Haji Matusin. Congratulations. And the way you are going to empower yourself and other women, as in, she says, as an ex-COVID patient, the experiences is an eye-opener. Life is very precious. I wanted to provide my support towards all women around me. Be a woman who supports other women. Compliment each each other, give words of encouragement, empower each other. Powerful words indeed. Congratulations. Our second winner is Hafiza Emran. And Hafiza said, I will challenge when women are disregarded, when there is lack of equal opportunities in my community, I will make sure that my niece feels empowered and that my nephew's behavior reflect the result of our fight to break the bias. That's our second winner. Congratulations. Third winner is Rash Isa. And she said, by loving yourself first, which I myself am trying to 100%, because I understand if you don't, whatever negative statement people are saying about you, you might believe it. So everyone, I invite you to love yourself in whatever form or state you are in. You are beautiful that way. So that is our third winner. And our fourth and final winner goes to Serena Binti Hasnal, who said, this year, I would like to empower myself by finally allowing myself to love and start dating after my divorce. As easy as it sounds for many, after what me and my children have endured, I believe we deserve the second chance. 
So congratulations once again to all our four winners. You are walking away with one $50 shopping voucher each, a total of four. And with that, it is now time for us to find our lucky draw winner. So at this juncture, I would like to invite Ng Yik Wei, the Head Group Strategic Marketing and Communications for Baiduri Bank to select and announce our lucky draw winner. And the lucky winner is... Brittany. Brittany! Congratulations, Brittany. You are our lucky winner, walking away with a $100 shopping voucher. Thank you very much, Ms. Ng Yik Wei, Head Group Strategic Marketing and Communications by Dury Bank. Now, to all our lucky winners, do stay on, don't leave yet, because we will be contacting you on how to get your, we need your details, so stay on, or actually you can send us a message, direct message in the chat box right now to give us your full name as well as your contact details, and someone from Baiduri Bank will get in touch with you as soon as possible. So once again, to all our winners, do send us a direct message right now with your details, your contact number as well as your name, and we'll get in touch with you to give you details on how you can get your vouchers. And that concludes our Glow Up Friday Women's Empowerment Event brought to you by Baiduri Bank. To all our speakers, our performers, everyone behind the scenes, and of course, to you. Thank you for joining us here this afternoon. We really do hope that this event was able to inspire you, motivate you, and empower you to be your best self. My name is Amy Chung. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.